Hi, this is Shreng Siddharth and welcome to the next part of this video series of interoperability. Now in this video, we will check out the demo. So here inside the IntelliJ IDE, I have my first .kt class, right? Now inside this, I am having a main function. Now down the side, I will simply define one more function of add. Let's say add a of the type of int and then b of the type of int. And now this will simply return a int value. So here I will simply return the sum of a plus b, which is actually the integer value. Now here inside the source folder, I will simply create my Java file. Let's call it as, let's say my Java file. And make sure it is of the class, hit on OK. And this will simply create a public class of my Java file. Now inside this, as per Java, we all know, we have to define a public static void main method, which is actually the entry point of any Java code, string args, right? Now if you compare my Java file dot Java and this my first dot kt, you will find the main method in both the case, right? This is a main method. And also here I have the main method. Now here, my objective is to call this add method from inside my Java file. But before that, let us understand how Java will simply interpret this file. So here, after the code is compiled, our the content of my first.kt file will simply convert it into this public class my first kt, right? So by default, we will get a class inside which we will have our main method and also the add method. So here, I will simply define my main method as public static void main string args similar to what we have in case of my java file. So this method function main arguments array of string is actually converted into this one public static void main string args. Now similar to this, we also have a add method that will be again converted into the java syntax. So here we have the add method public static int add integer a and integer b. So here I have the return type of int and here we have the return type of int, right? Here we have two parameters and here again we have two parameters and again we are returning the sum of a plus b, right? So this is how the Java looks at these four lines of code that is the function name and function add. Now, now since now we know that we are actually having this code internally, so from the my java file inside the main function i can simply call let's say the name of the class let's say my first kt dot class right so this is actually the auto generated class name inside which we have two methods of let's say main and add so the intellisense will simply show you these two options so our destiny is to call this add method and let us call let's say 3 and 4. Let us add these two numbers and here I am simply following the Java syntax by adding a semicolon to end the expression. Now let us use int sum equal to this function and now here I will simply print out such as system.out.println printing sum from the Java file and simply print the value of the sum, right? And now here at the top, what I will do, I will simply click on this icon to run the code. Simply run my java file dot main method. And in the output, we have printing sum from java file as 7, right? So this is how we access a method inside the Kotlin class from inside the Java class. And now similarly, can we access the Java methods from within the Kotlin file? The answer to this is yes. Now suppose if I define a method here, let's say public static get area of a rectangle, let's say int length and int breadth and then simply return L into B, right? And now here I forgot to give the return type as int. And now this method can be accessed from inside the Kotlin file using the same syntax, such as from inside the main method. I will simply call, sorry, where area equal to my 
java file which is our class name dot get area and simply pass let's say length as 10 and then breadth as 5 and now here I will simply call print line printing area from the Kotlin file and now simply replace it by area. So here we are simply printing the area of the rectangle by calling a method present inside the file of dot java file that is this file right and now let us run our Kotlin code. So here simply click on it and simply click on run my first kt like we run any Kotlin file. So in the output we get printing area from the Kotlin file that is 50 right. So in this way we can have both Kotlin and also the Java file inside the same application. And now let us try something different. Now suppose from the Java file we are actually using my first kt which is the standard naming convention that the compiler follow right my first kt.class is getting converted during the compilation. Now suppose if I use the syntax at the top, let's say at the rate file and then jvm name and as a parameter, let's say give it a name as my custom Kotlin file, right? Now what happens is that the compiler will simply give this file name while converting into the bytecode as my custom Kotlin file name, right? Now, if you want to access these methods, so what will happen is that instead of calling my first kt, you have to simply use this syntax. So, control C, and here let us change the comment by this one. And now, next inside my file, you have to simply use it shows some error. So, here you have to simply use my custom Kotlin file name dot add. So, now onwards, our Kotlin file is now having the wrapper of the class name of my custom Kotlin file name which we have defined at the file level here right and now let us run our java code by simply running the main function so here we go printing sum from the java file as 7 right so our code is now working perfectly fine and now what about the packages now since these two files are actually present directly inside the source folder now if i want to create let's say a new package and let's say let's call it as com.myjava hit on ok and now simply drag and drop this myjava file into this package refactor and now here if you notice inside the myjava file.java here i have the package of com.myjava so this file is now a part of this package and now here let us create one more package and let us call it as com.mykotlin where we will store all our kotlin files and now simply drag and drop the kotlin files inside my kotlin package and then refactor so inside my first.kt you will find the package name as com.mykotlin and now if you notice here, here we have simply imported the package of com.myjava.myjava file. So here let us remove it as of now and let's see what happens. So here it simply shows some error, unresolved file, right? Unresolved class name. So here I will simply press alt enter. Now whenever there is some error in case of IntelliJ IDE, simply press alt plus enter. What? Alt plus enter and hit on import. So the IntelliJ IDE will simply import the required package for you. And now next, inside my Java file, again we have some error, cannot resolve this class name. So again what to do, simply press alt enter. So here I have the complete import package as com.mykotlin.mycustomkotlin file name, right? And now if you run the code, then also the code will work perfectly fine in both the files. So here we go, our code is still working perfectly fine. So this is how we actually create the packages in case of Kotlin. And we can store both the Java file and also the Kotlin file within the same application. So this is how we are going to work in case of Android as well. So thanks for watching and have a good day and see you guys in the next video. Thank you.